Hello, my lovelies all over the world. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Um, today, I want to finally, finally make that video that I promised you all back in May about female sexuality. And I think it's actually a good thing that I kind of took my time over it just because um, I didn't make it before just because I was busy. And then also I was getting a lot of, um, a lot of my videos were getting demonetized just for being having controversial content. I mean, I'm sure you're all aware that, that that's happened to a lot of people on YouTube recently, people getting strikes on their accounts for posting controversial content. Um, I suppose in a world built on lies, the truth is pretty controversial. Um, so yeah, I kind of held off because I didn't want my, you know, my labors to be demonetized. But now my whole channel has been demonetized because it's, you know, not got enough views, although I have enough subscribers. So I'm actually kind of glad about it because now it means that I'm free to kind of make whatever videos I like and not worry about them being demonetized because they've all been demonetized until I get um, my view account over a certain amount. But that's kind of, I mean, the money was nice, but it wasn't really life changing. It was, you know, just a little bit of pocket money. Um, more importantly, it's, uh, you know, my primary motivation for making these videos is just getting the truth out there, getting, um, my perspective as I see things because I know that I have a unique perspective because nobody has lived my experiences just like with all of you you all have a unique perspective and unique stories to tell um, which I hope that you're going to find a way to share them all with the collective because that's what we do um, as source experiencing itself um, so yeah demonetization great thing um, now, I wanted to talk about female sexuality, sacred sexuality, um, hookup culture, and how it overlaps with rape culture. Um, and I think now is actually like the prime time to talk about it because now this conversation has kind of been busted into the open since the whole Me Too movement has kind of gained a lot of traction. Um, and obviously, everybody's talking about the whole Aziz Ansari uh, versus Grace thing, which has been very, very divisive, namely because a lot of it's hit really, really close to home. A lot of people can recognize themselves in the story, women and men, and it's creating an international conversation around the issues of consent and sexuality and, you know, is it just bad sex or is it sexual assault and, you know, is it okay that we just think that this is bad sex or should we be having a bigger conversation about this? And, you know, my perspective is we should be having a bigger conversation about this. I think that um, the nature of female sexuality has been so deeply misunderstood that we think um, that, you know, this kind of pushy, misogynistic behavior is okay just because it's so normalized. But it isn't okay, and I, I think that it needs to change. And I feel like, for me, the Me Too movement is really encouraging because I can see that it's really, really connected to um, the sacred feminine awakening that is taking place. And um, I feel like those who embody feminine energy, which is all of us actually, but those who embody more of the feminine energy, which is women and those who identify as women or non-binary individuals who identify as being having more feminine energy, will be experiencing this on, on quite a collective level. I mean, I know I have and all the other women I know who are very kind of in tune um, are experiencing this. We're kind of you know, clearing out ancestral traumas, we're clearing out, you know, personal traumas as well. And just generally, um, just feeling quite, feeling a lot of the, um, just the pain of the feminine collective and the way that she's been violated and commodified and just generally disrespected. Um, I got a comment actually on, uh, 
on my, my one of my most recent videos, um, hashtag Me Too and the Divine Masculine, which I thought was interesting, and I have heard this before, that uh, the Me Too movement is a witch hunt. I, I always find it hilarious when people like to quote these little sound bites. It's just an indicative of the fact that they can't really think for themselves. They've just taken something that sounds good and sounds clever and just are repeating it willy-nilly without really thinking about the significance of what they're actually saying. Comparing the Me Too movement, which is basically connected to the Sacred Feminine Awakening, to one of the most infamous periods in history um, that was responsible for mass, mass suppression of the Sacred Feminine is so ironic, it's not even funny. It's ridiculous to suggest that a period of time where wise women and healers and oracles and sages and those that embodied that sacred feminine energy of care and wisdom and intuition um, and being in touch with the divine were rounded up and burnt at the stake or drowned or had all sorts of other horrible things done to them as a way to suppress feminine consciousness. Comparing those two things is... I mean, it's offensive, but I'm not going to get offended about it. I just find it ironic and, frankly, quite idiotic that people are repeating this little soundbite. Like, really, really think about what you're saying and what it actually means. It's not a witch hunt. If anything, it's quite the opposite. It's wise women who embody sacred feminine energy actually stepping into the power of their sexuality and saying that enough is enough. Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about hookup culture. Now, uh, some decades ago, before I was born, uh, we experienced as a human collective uh, something that is known as the sexual revolution, where women's sexuality, women demanded that their sexuality was no longer policed, that we want to have the same freedoms as men, and if men want to share their sexual energy around and, you know, uh, subscribe to uh, very um, hazy definitions of what monogamy looks like, then we're going to do it too. So we're going to go around and spread our sexual energy around as well. Um, now, we've come to a point uh, in our history in, as a collective where we've realized that this isn't working. Like trying to emulate the toxic masculine has not done anything for the feminine collective. It's not helped us at all, in my personal opinion. And I, I say this as somebody who has personal experience with spreading my sexual energy quite freely. There were many times when I enjoyed it, but there were also many times when it was actually traumatic. And I think that, um, you know, I, do, I, I definitely don't want to feed into any kind of slut-shaming kind of... Um, thinking, because that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, but I, it's my personal belief that hookup culture is feeding into rape culture, because it's basically promoting this idea that feminine sexuality is not something sacred, and it's something that can be freely shared with whoever we want to share it with, whenever we want to share it, without having any kind of emotional intimacy with that person and it actually feeds into suppression of the sacred feminine because the sacred feminine is about care and connection and you know being in touch with your emotions and it, it does require emotional intimacy to as a precursor to physical intimacy so you know this whole idea that we can spread our sexual energy in the same way as the toxic masculine does um we're actually oppressing ourselves and we're oppressing all that is sacred feminine because we're saying that we don't need that kind of emotional intimacy that it's fine you know we can do it just like the guys I'm sorry but like I don't really want to do it just like the toxic masculine it's not enjoyable for me um there is a reason some people you know a lot of third wave feminists and even radical feminists will uh Okay, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to say that willy nilly because I don't identify as a feminist, so I don't really. I'm not really like super well versed on feminist discourse, 
But I do feel like a lot of the third wave feminists find the idea that women as sexual gatekeepers really problematic. But I think that there is a biological reason why women have always been the sexual gatekeepers. And it is to do with the biological differences between men and women and between female and male sexuality. Men can become aroused very, very quickly, whereas women take longer and they require just a much more complicated level of intimacy. We, are, we require emotional intimacy. We require, you know, just all, all those things, like the ritual of beautifying ourselves, the ritual of kind of going out for some kind of like, you know, just like a date night or something. You know, hookup culture has kind of created this idea that, you know, we can just go around to a guy's house for a booty call or he can come around to ours like after being out all night you know, most probably trying to seduce other women and he can just come back to our place and fuck us without without doing anything, basically. And it's not serving us well. Um, I recently finished uh, reading this book, Naomi Wolf Vagina. Um, for those of you that haven't read it, this is a must read if you want to understand feminine sexuality. Um, Anybody who has ever interacted with a vagina, which is basically all of us, because we were all birthed through one, should read this book. Um, I will kind of include a quote uh, from it to kind of explain what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, uh, where was I going? Ooh, I kind of lost my train of thought. Okay, I lost my train of thought, but I'm just going back to my notes. Um, Back to my earlier point about women trying to, and feminists in particular, promoting this idea that our liberation comes through emulating the toxic masculine um, and kind of promoting this kind of hookup culture. This creates, you know, um, an aspect of the toxic feminine, which um, is actually just exacerbating misogyny. Um, what I mean by toxic feminine is basically over-reliance on looks, uh, on, on, you know, the, the, the feminine and, you know, everything that's beautiful about the feminine, but suppressing those other um, beautiful aspects of femininity, like, you know, just being a good person, being caring, being nurturing, being a good partner, um, respecting your man, um, all those kinds of things, and, and becoming very manipulative, using your sexuality for personal gain or financial gain. Um, and some of these things are results of living in a patriarchal society that encourages women to be like this. So I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, some women are not actually given any options but to do this because of all sorts of issues like colonialism, racism, lack of opportunities. So many women are forced into this position where they have to commodify their sexuality. And I know this only too well as being... A model and sometimes being forced to commodify my sexuality, um, which for a lot of women is quite a traumatic experience, um, but something that we, a lot of the time, we're not really given that many choices about, um, but it's still an aspect of toxic feminine and it needs to change and it will only change when we actually start respecting ourselves and stepping into our power piece by piece. It's not going to happen overnight and I'm not saying that it should ha happen overnight but we as women need to recognize how powerful our sexuality is because if it wasn't so powerful it wouldn't be used to sell everything from fucking toothpaste to cars and everything in between. Um, Okay, um, but this definitely does feed into rape culture because the, objectifi the objectification of women has kind of promoted this idea that female sexuality is not sacred and it is a prize that is awarded to men when they gain status and power in the world. And we feed into this by actually giving them that so that we can tap into some of that institutional power. Um, obviously, tearing down the patriarchy will help us in that way. Um, but we need to recognize the source of the problem as well and the part that we play in it um, if we're ever to dismantle it. Um, I've obviously talked about the toxic masculine in some of my other videos and we know all too well what the toxic masculine is. So I'm not going to go too much into that. But I will also acknowledge that there is toxic feminine at play as well, which is exacerbating 
toxic masculinity and misogyny because they're kind of seeing that we're using our feminine sexuality, which is a, a source of power because it is the source of all creation, that we're using it against them which we are, but we, that's for a reason, and it's because we've been suppressed and disempowered. So there's a, there's a dynamic at play, and it's going to take both aspects of the masculine and the feminine, the yin and the yang, to heal it together. Um, okay, uh, what's my next point? Oh, yeah, 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 I want to show you this little... Um, okay, so I'm, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm living in Cambodia uh, with my partner at the moment. We've moved out here to kind of work on our startups, and uh, I went to the market and they sell like, you know, at the market, they, they've got stalls which sell like souvenirs where they sell like Buddhas and um, which, yeah, I know is kind of culturally appropriative if, you know, people are buying it and they're not using it properly. Um, but they sell mala beads and things like that. And some of them sell these little like statuettes where they sell like little Ganeshas and, you know, different Hindu deities, Buddhist deities. And among them... I found this beautiful thing. Take a look at this. Now, can you see what this is? This is a lingam, a phallus, a phallic symbol. And on it is a goddess with her legs wide open, exposing her yoni. And she has a lingam right here about to penetrate her. So this is the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine. As you can see on the back right here, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a serpent. So there's a lot of symbolism in this. And you'll see these in, you know, many, many cultures, many religious buildings all over the world. Um, when you start opening your eyes, you'll, you'll see this depicted. In ancient cultures, they worship the goddess, they worship the yoni as something sacred, and also the lingam as something sacred. This is fertility, this is the source of all creation. This is the power of our sexuality, both feminine and masculine, but especially feminine, because that is the source of all creation. Um, it's also depicted right here, I'm going to put a screenshot right here. Um, this is from a film... Uh, that I saw recently called uh, Crimson Peak. And uh, as you can see here, this is from a Catholic graveyard. And if you can see here, this is the lingam. And on front of it, you can see the Madonna, the uh, Virgin Mary. And if those of you are um, well researched on occult symbology, the uh, Virgin Mary Madonna is a symbol of the sacred feminine the vulva, um, also the vesica Pisces, which is, again, the source of all creation. You'll see it in sacred geometry wherever you look. Um, the serpent also has been depicted throughout many, many ancient cultures. Um, some people say it has uh, sort of reptilian, uh, it has references to our reptilian um, origins, uh, which, you know, definitely has some sort of credence to it but also there's definitely something going on there to do with you know Eve and the serpent and the apple from the tree of knowledge um, I feel like now I might be wrong on this and I haven't fully fully researched it but I feel like the apple is representative of that female sexuality and to bite the apple is to to know the truth. The, the, the apple from the tree of knowledge is tapping into that source consciousness, that, that um, portal to the divine. Um, and I feel like, you know, Satanism, Luciferianism has turned everything on its head and it has turned this idea of understanding and eating that fruit from the tree of knowledge as something bad and negative and connected to the fall of man. Um, so here I'm going to read a quote, and it's it's a Naomi Wolf quote. But it's not from the Vagina book. It was actually from um, an interview that she did with um, Emily Ratajkowski, who's actually quite an interesting character. I know that she is the star of the Blurred Lines video, which is pretty much one of the most problematic um, pop songs of our modern age and definitely feeds into this whole rape culture, hookup culture thing that I'm talking about. Um, but she definitely has some interesting things to say about female sexuality and about who it is that actually owns female sexuality and her own sexuality and about 
you know, female consent and agency and the whole idea of suppression of female sexuality, that, that suppression of, that, that whole idea of objectification of women being tied to oppression of women when actually maybe it's something that we should be celebrating because it's something very divine. Um, okay, let me see if I can find the quote. Do, 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 do. Somewhere here, this is where I keep all my quotes that I post on Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Follow me on Instagram because I'm posting on Instagram much more than I'm posting here. So um, definitely you can join any of these conversations, any of these things that I talk about on Instagram. Love hearing your comments. Okay, so here's the quote. I love this. Um, in an instant, I realized that a rich... Ah, no, 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 sorry. This is from the vagina book. But anyway, I digress. Okay. In an instant, I realized that original sin did not, as the Judeo-Christian tradition has it, originate in human sexuality. Our species' original sin was in deviating from our earliest tradition of reverence for the feminine and for female sexuality and all that it represented for us. Our original sin lies in 5,000 years of shaming it, stigmatizing it, controlling it, subduing it, splitting it off from women, from men, compartmentalizing it, insulting it, and selling it. Great dislocations and alienations in civilization and in human development have followed from that original sin, and the results are everywhere around us. In a flash, I saw waves of tragedy for women, for men, and for a now unbalanced, now plundering civilization that followed from this original alienation. She's a pretty powerful writer, this Naomi Wolf. Like, I'm obsessed with her right now. I'm definitely going to read her other stuff. Um, definitely a pioneer of the fourth wave feminism, which I think is much more in line with the sacred feminine awakening that is taking place. Um, yeah, in the book, she also talks about something called the goddess array, um, which is, again, I've talked about this idea of, you know, the word foreplay being intrinsically misogynistic because it's this idea that sex is this. This is se sex and everything else is just extra. It's just fluff. So you only get that extra special fluff if you are with a partner. But actually all sex should be happening within a partner with with a partner. That is that is what sex is. It's when you come into holy sacred union with a partner, with you with someone who you trust and who you have emotional intimacy with. It makes it Abs the way that female sexuality is, you know, much more of a uh, slow burning coal rather than a fast burning flame, um, is to weed out those perps who are not going to respect you and to honor your sexuality and to honor you as, you know, the expression of sacred feminine that you are. It's, you know... So that you only connect sexually with somebody who cares about you and who's willing to put in the time and the effort to get you to that point of arousal that, that, are, that is required for you to experience really deep full body orgasms, which are absolutely essential for connecting to that, that, you know, that divine energy. Like we cannot be a portal to the divine and let that sacred sexual energy move through us if we cannot experience full body orgasms. And way too many women are not experiencing this kind of sexual potential. So many, I mean, if you look at the statistics for, you know, how many women actually orgasm during, you know, sexual contact, it's woefully low. But actually our orgasmic potential is much, much higher than men. We can you know, come 10, 15, 20 times in a session if it's being done, if we're being made love to properly. But unfortunately, female sexuality has been so vastly misunderstood that most men don't know how to do it properly. And most women are so disconnected from their own bodies that they don't know how to show men what they need. And even if they did know, we're too silenced because of that those witch hunts, we have blockages in our throat chakra that prevent us from speaking out. And that's exactly what fe fem suppression of feminine sexuality does to women. It creates blockages in our chakras and stops us from being wise women and healers and, you know, sages and activists and, 
you know, speaking out against injustice and creating the kind of world that we want to see. The suppression of female sexuality has been really, really instrumental in suppressing human consciousness, not just female consciousness. And it was really understood in ancient Indian culture, in ancient Chinese culture, that treating women well and honoring the sacred feminine and, you know, really honoring female sexuality was actually quite instrumental to men's health as well because men are not going to be happy if the women in their lives are not happy. Like, you know, the, it's well known that there are many women across the world who act like crazy bitches. Um, and, you know, I, I've, you know, been one of those people as well because, and it's not because we're intrinsically crazy, it's because we're completely out of balance and most of us have been massively traumatized. If we haven't been traumatized personally ourselves, the the domestic terrorism and actually the public terrorism of women, which is violence against women and rape and violation of any woman, is something that suppresses all women because it keeps women in their place, it keeps us fearful, it keeps us, it limits our freedom because we have less access to public space when we have, are living with the constant threat of sexual violence or physical violence. Um, and it's just generally bad for humanity. Um, okay, what other point did I want to make? Yeah, that's it. Like, that's pretty much all I have to say. Like, I think I've pretty much covered all the little bullet points on that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, what do you guys think? Leave your comments in the comment box below. Follow me on Instagram as well. Um, let me know what you think, um, you know, what, what are your views on sacred sexuality? I want to hear from you all. I love hearing from you. Let's start a conversation. Um, many thanks for watching. If you got all the way to the end, um, if you want to share this video amongst your network, if it can help somebody that you know, please do. Um, and I love you all. And what else do I want to say? I've completely forgotten how to round off videos, but that's okay. Um, I'm also going to do a series of videos where I disseminate the occult symbology and the references to um you know sacred feminine sacred masculine um and the eye of horus um in some films that i've been watching recently because i've been spotting all these kind of hidden um subliminal messaging in uh films and TV shows and songs as well. So if you guys want to see that, give this video a thumbs up because um, it will take me quite a long time to make those videos, but I, I want to do it for you all. So let me know if you want to see that. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.